Welcome back to Fresh Gear. For almost 20 years, the compact disc has been the audio format of choice. But with the advent of DVD comes the potential of high sound quality. We spoke to Tech TV Lab's James Kim to learn more about the difference between DVD-A and SACD audio formats and to take a look at the latest in players. In 1999, uh, two new formats emerged. One of them is SACD, the other is DVD-A. And they both use DVD discs, which you know, hold a lot, a lot more data. Let's look at a CD. It holds, on average, 700 megabytes of data. The DVD holds 4.7 gigabytes. You're able to have the original audio signal that's actually burned onto the discs to be of much higher quality. These are two emerging formats, and they're nowhere near maturity, although there are a lot of labels, major labels, who are now ramping up for both formats. If you go to Tower Records or Virgin, you'll see that the uh, DVD audio section is small. For each format, they have around 300 titles. And as we saw with the original CD, a lot of the first titles we saw were classical and jazz, because those are the people who are willing to buy high-quality audio, you know, because the discs themselves are cost between $20 and $30. In terms of the two formats competing against each other, they're really two different formats. DVD audio actually has enough space to put a couple different mixes, but also video and text and images as well. So you'll see that Blue Man Group DVD has a lot of extra content on there. And that's the kind of thing that's going to push DVD over the edge because people want video. People want that extra information as opposed to Super Audio CD where all the space on there is dedicated to maximizing the sound quality, a super audio CD is targeted to the audiophile consumer. For our testing, we got in a few players. We have a, an Apex player that plays both DV audio and SACD. For $250, it's a bargain. Um, it, it's also a DVD player. It also plays CDs. It also plays MP3 CDs. So I think what consumers are really going to want is that one device that plays everything. On the higher end, with Pioneer, we have a couple of players here. One of them is $2,000, a dedicated DVD player with DVD audio compatibility. It's pretty high end. Not only is the sound quality great, but all the features and functionality are you know, pretty tight. Uh, we also have another Pioneer player that is $3,000 that plays both SACD and DVD audio. We've been testing you know, all three formats, including CD, on a fairly good surround system. I was listening to uh, a Bjork CD and a Bjork DVD audio disc. You know, the CD sounds really good, but after playing the DVD audio disc, you really feel like you're there. So much of the spectrum has been captured that you can hear all these little elements. You have to be able to taste that to really understand the, the, the power of these new formats. So what's the future of these two formats? They're gonna be around for a while, and eventually, eventually, they will overtake the CD, one or the other, if not both. For the hard facts on how those audio formats compare, head to our website, freshgear.com. Now, from new ways to listen to new ways to communicate. While some Frankenstein hybrids like portable MP3 digital camera voice recorders haven't quite found their market yet, one convergence category continues to thrive, the cell phone PDA combo. In our next story, we look at the latest wireless hybrids. Some things just make great combinations. Hey, there's chocolate in my peanut butter. There's TiVo in my direct TV. So it goes for the cell phone and personal digital assistant. Right now, cell phones and PDAs use much of the same data, and yet they can't talk to each other. So instead of carrying around both devices, combining the two is the natural next step on the mobility ladder. Samsung, Kyocera, and Nokia have added PDA operating systems to their cell phones while Handspring and Palm both had cell phone add-ons for their PDAs. Now Handspring has incorporated the visor phone features into their new device, the Trio 180. It's a PDA and a cell phone. As a cell phone, the Trio works on the GSM network. The speed dials and keypad are all software-based, but you can also use this built-in keyboard down on the bottom, which also makes composing an SMS text message real easy. As a PDA, the Trio has 16 megs of memory and can browse the web, send and receive email and instant messages, as well as store all your contacts and appointments. Trio uses the Blazor browser to optimize web pages for easier loading. 
But the Trio uses an integrated rechargeable battery, which prevents road warriors from swapping out batteries when they're away from AC power. The Trio sells for $400 with cellular activation. Danger. Danger is around the corner. Soon, Danger Research will be shipping its convergence device, the Hip Top. The hip top definitely has all the right features to fit the bill as a sleek mobile communication gadget. We like the hidden keyboard that's underneath the display. It makes text messaging really simple. There's also this navigation wheel that allows you to quickly scroll through different applications and it glows different colors for incoming emails and calls. And there's also the three shortcut buttons, menu, jump and back, that make navigation really simple. But the cool hardware is only part of it. The application suite includes email, a browser, instant messaging, and a personal information manager. HipTop will debut on the GSM network for voice, and it'll also support GPRS, which will let you sync your data wirelessly over the web. Danger claims it will offer unlimited data for $25 a month. Danger hopes to see the HipTop on store shelves later this spring for under $200. While the cell phone PDA hybrid is sure to last, we're concerned about the lasting durability of these mobile devices. Will these larger screens be able to survive the amount of abuse we dish out each day? If you're still not keen on the cell phone PDA marriage, Palm has unveiled its newest PDA with wireless access, the i705. While you can't make calls on it, you can grab email and instant messages. It also has a web browser, but the connection speed is slow, so surfing the web takes a lot of patience. You can set the antenna to always be active, so you'll receive alerts when new email arrives. This makes the i705 a good choice for those looking for two-way messaging with the convenience of the Palm operating system. But it's just not fast enough to browse the web. Want our complete reviews of these wireless PDA hybrids? Go to FreshGear.com. Coming up next, we review Apple's latest line of products from their new flat panel iMac to the Power Mac G4. Welcome back to Fresh Gear. Not only has Apple inspired creativity in its users with their software, their hardware is often very design-centric. But is there substance to back up that style? Here's Tech TV Lab's Brett Larson with the latest crop of Apple products. We're here looking at the latest hardware from Apple computers, starting with their new iMac featuring a 15-inch LCD display, G4 chip, and an available super drive. We've also got the new iBook, which now comes with a 14-inch display, and up on the top, the long-awaited dual 1 gigahertz Power Mac G4. This is Apple's new iMac, featuring a slick new industrial design and a 15-inch LCD. On the inside, you'll find the G4 chip with speeds up to 800 megahertz, as well as the Super Drive, which lets you burn CDs and DVDs. As far as software is concerned, the new iMac will run Mac OS X, as well as iPhoto and iDVD for DVD authoring. On the back, we'll find our headphone jack, the plug for your USB Pro speakers, two FireWire ports, an Ethernet port, power, built-in modem, three USB ports, and VGA out. For a price range of $1,300 to $1,800, we think the iMac is an excellent choice for working with all your digital media. For the Mac user on the go, you might want to consider Apple's new iBook. Now, it's added an extra pound, but it's also added a 14-inch display and some extra battery life. It comes with Apple's complete software bundle, including iPhotos, iTunes, and iMovie. And with the combo drive, you'll be able to burn CDs and watch your DVD movies. The iBook is airport ready, but it also includes a built-in modem, built-in Ethernet jack, FireWire port, two USB ports, a DIN VGA connector, and audio video out. Although the package is nice and the 14-inch display is very pleasing to look at, the $1,800 price tag is a little hefty. For the professional Mac user, the Power Mac G4 is the choice for you. With a $500 lower price tag than the previous version of the G4, it comes with 256 more megs of RAM, bringing your total up to 512, and best of all, two 1 GHz G4 chips. This high-end workstation has enough performance power to make your way through professional applications like Adobe Photoshop. The dual 1 GHz comes in Apple's easy-to-access Quicksilver case, which makes upgrading a snap. On the back, you'll find a headphone jack, stereo out, a modem, gigabit ethernet, 
two Firewire ports, two USB ports, four available PCI slots, and a video card capable of handling both Apple's ADC monitors and a VGA port. Overall, this Power Mac will make any content creator happy, shaving valuable time off of every one of your creative endeavors. The newly updated Macs provide something for everyone, from the entry-level iMac with enough performance power to get you through even your most creative of tasks, to the 14-inch iBook, all the way up to the powerhouse dual 1 gigahertz G4. Between any of these three, you may just become the envy of your PC-using friends. That's all the time we have for this week's show. We'd like to thank Metreon, a Sony Entertainment Center, for letting us spend the day here.